Hi guys, welcome to the Extractions Lab. In this lab, we're going to be doing extractions on a mixture of three compounds. So your mixture is going to be carboxylic acid, which is acidic, an amine, which is basic, and a neutral compound. The word extraction means removal. So one at a time, we're going to be removing one of the compounds from the mixture. And we do that based on solubility. You're going to take your unknown solid and you're going to put it in ether. That ether now is our organic layer. It's an organic compound, doesn't mix with water. It's easier to think about this lab too if we think about acid-base reactions. Some of our extractions are actually gonna be acid-base reactions. In the first step, we're gonna take that mixture of the carboxylic acid, the amine, and the neutral compound, and we're going to extract it with HCl. Our HCl is in water. So that HCl mixture that we add to the separatory funnel becomes our aqueous layer. When you react carboxylic acid with HCl, nothing happens. When you react an amine with HCl, something happens. Our amine is a base and it reacts with the HCl and it becomes the conjugate acid. So it becomes a charged species, which now will go into the aqueous layer. So now in your aqueous layer, you have your amine, which is protonated. And in your organic layer, your ether, you have your carboxylic acid and your neutral compound. You're going to subsequently take that aqueous layer, react it with sodium hydroxide to take the proton back off to recreate your neutral base, which will then precipitate out in the aqueous layer. And now you have your first solid removed from the mixture. If you go back now to the organic layer, it's a mixture of the carboxylic acid and the neutral compound. It's still ether. Our second extraction is going to be with sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate in water, okay, that's our aqueous layer again, is going to react with the carboxylic acid and create its conjugate base. It does not react with the neutral compound. So once we form that conjugate base on the carboxylic acid, it becomes charged. That charged species then becomes soluble in our aqueous layer. The neutral compound, unreacted, stays in our organic ether layer. Again, with that aqueous layer, we're going to take the carboxylic acid fraction. We're going to react it with HCl again, which will then convert the conjugate base back into the acid. That becomes insoluble in the aqueous solution, and you get a precipitate again but this time it's the carboxylic acid that has been removed from your mixture. We step back to the organic layer. This one's easy now. It's our neutral compound in ether. Is all we have to do is evaporate off the ether and there we have our third compound removed from the mixture. Extractions are very important in organic chemistry. It's all based on solubility and very, very, very helpful process separating compounds. Have fun with this one. You are going to stir diethyl ether in your solid mixture until everything is completely dissolved and then pour that mixture into the set funnel. Water will then be added. When this happens, you will see two distinct layers form. It is your job to distinguish between your aqueous and your organic layer. As mentioned previously, your aqueous layer will be the layer that contains water and the organic layer will be the layer that includes your ether and other organic material. You are also able to determine which layer is which by calculating the density of your compounds in your mixture. The layer that is more dense will always be at the bottom. For this lab, your top layer will be your organic layer and your bottom layer will be your aqueous layer. Once the water is added, you will do two extractions with HCl. Once you add HCl, you will need to invert the set funnel. This means that you must release the pressure inside the set funnel when the reaction is occurring. Releasing the pressure is also known as venting. To do this, you want to make sure that the cap of the set funnel is at the palm of your hand and that the valve at the bottom of the set funnel is closed. You then invert or shake the set funnel like this a couple of times. To release the pressure, you must make sure that the nose of the set funnel is facing away from you and is inside the hood. Once the pressure is released, place the set funnel back on the metal ring clamp and wait for the layers to separate completely. You must label three flasks, A, B, and C. To finish your first extraction, you must take the cap off the top of the set funnel and drain the aqueous layer into your flask labeled A. Flask A will have the aqueous layers from extracting with HCl twice. With the organic layer after HCl extractions, you will add NaOH to the set funnel, invert, and drain the aqueous layer into your flask labeled B. You will do two extractions with NaOH. 
Then with the organic layer of the last extraction, you will add a brine solution and extract twice with that, putting the aqueous layer into a discard beaker and pouring the organic layer after both extractions into flask C. To obtain the organic layer, you will pour it out from the top of the set funnel to avoid contamination. For flask C, you should add anhydrous sodium sulfate into the solution until there are visible clumps. You should swirl the solution while doing this. Later, you will filtrate the contents of flask C out by pouring the mixture through a glass filtration funnel with cotton into a round bottom flask to be rotavept later. For flask A, you will add NaOH until it becomes basic and test the pH as you go. When the pH becomes about 10, cool the flask in an ice bath in order to form precipitate, which will later be collected by vacuum filtration. If the precipitate does not form, add more NaOH. For flask B, you will be doing the same thing as flask A, but with HCl to get the solution to a pH of about 2. If precipitate does not form, add more HCl. Transfer both solids into separate and labeled test tubes for later. Wear gloves and safety glasses. Some tips about SEP funnels. So the SEP funnel has a top to it, but the top has to be matched to the SEP funnel. You can't interchange tops. So make sure you have the right fitting top on the SEP funnel. When you're venting the SEP funnel, you should always point it away from you while you're in, in the hood. The stop cock on the SEP funnel should be tight and it should be in the closed position when you're adding liquid to the SEP funnel. Otherwise, if it's open, everything you put in will just spill out the bottom. Uh, you'll be using the Rotovap this lab, so that, please watch the Rotovap video, which describes how to use the Rotovap. Uh, you'll be using diethyl ether, which is a highly flammable solvent, so be aware of that. And again, it's always dispose of your waste properly. Okay, there you have it. That's how you do an extraction. We will be doing these types of extractions and many experiments throughout the semester. If you have any questions, let me know. Good luck!